Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Test Manager Certification. We are still with our chapter 2 talking about the test management but moving into the next segment that is 2.3 risk based testing and other approaches for test prioritization and effort allocation. As a part of this segment, we will be covering everything about risk based testing and of course it's going to include a lot of information and help you to understand at how exactly risk can be addressed. Now 2.3.1 risk based testing is what we are covering as a part of this tutorial. This is going to be a long topic so probably we will be having different parts of it so please uh, stay tuned for that and wait uh, for the other parts to come in in the upcoming tutorials which will help you to understand completely what exactly risk based testing is. As a part of number one, uh, the very first part of this particular segment that is risk-based testing, we are just talking about a basic introduction to what exactly risk-based testing is. First of all, we must be able to define and understand what exactly risk is. I think from the foundation, we already know a definition of the risk that it can be an uncertainty which may or may not happen. But if it happens, probably leaves a negative impact. And of course, these impacts could be very crucial or critical in terms of releasing the product or delivering the product on time. There might be several factors which can be considered in terms of risk. So that's where we categorize uh, any identified risk into two major categories called as product risk, which is also known as quality risk or project risk. Okay, so majorly there are two categories, product risk or project risk, where product risk can also be called as quality risk. Now, how exactly we differentiate between them? Anything which impacts the quality attributes of the product, for example, performance, security, usability, recovery, portability, these are all my quality characteristics of a product. If anything impacts the product's quality attribute, you call it as product risk. If there's any such risk which impacts the process of making the product, this, that's what you related to project risk. For example, poor documentation, developers uh, fixing the defects late in the cycle, or test cases are not clearly defined, probably the requirements are not documented on time, environment is not ready on time. All these factors are basically the process oriented and can impact the delivery of the product as per the schedule. And we relate all these things to the project risk. So anything which impacts your project, you put them into the project risk or planning risk as well. Now in risk-based testing, quality risks are identified and assessed during a product quality risk analysis process with these stakeholders. Of course, you do invite all of different stakeholders who will contribute in order to determine that what kind of risk you have identified and what kind of impact this risk can have and how we will be mitigating that. That's the most important thing. The quality includes the totality of the features, behavior, characteristics, and attributes that affect customers, user, or stakeholder satisfaction by any means. So therefore, a quality risk is a potential situation where quality problems might exist in a product. So we just have to make sure that everything is being gathered together. We invite various uh, stakeholders from different point of views, different perspectives, and collect as many risks as possible. So there is a process which we follow when it comes to the risk analysis or risk-based testing. It consists of four major stages called as risk identification, risk assessment, risk mitigation, and risk management. In a very nutshell way, risk identification is to identify the risk and risk assessment is to assess the impact and the likelihood of that event to happen. So step number three is mitigation. Of course, what's your steps to mitigate that risk well in advance? If in case you could not reduce that in advance, then when it happens, how you're going to overcome that? So planning all about that mitigation, allocating effort is mitigation. And risk management is a throughout process. Okay, throughout process to make sure that if that planned uh, steps are being executed or not, whether everything is in place as per the mitigation layout. So all these things will happen uh, throughout the life cycle of testing and we call it as risk management. Well, this is what we'll be elaborating in more detail in our upcoming tutorials. But today we are understanding a little bit about the risk identification. Now, of course, risk identification is a phase where you try to identify the possible risk within your project and related to the product's quality. 
So you identify project and product risk. There are different ways, different approaches which can be used in order to identify a risk with help of your stakeholders, of course. Not alone you being a test manager, you do invite development manager, certain developers, architects, uh, you know, business analysts, business users. You can invite anyone whom you think is a good contributor in terms of uh, identifying the risk. What are the different ways to identify the risk? Of course, here's a list. You can have an expert interview talking about uh, discussing with a consultant that probably he or she might have a great experience about that particular domain. Independent assessments, you can let people uh, do a proper assessment and come out with their own concepts or own perceptions and contribute to that. Use of risk templates, which might be available in your organization and you can make use of it. Project retrospectives, you do collect all the lessons learned from different projects. You take all those retrospective reports and see that what common mistakes and what challenges we have pay faced in the past few projects. Risk workshop can also be organized, brainstorming, like just trying to think, you know, what possible things can go wrong. Checklist is another important thing and calling on the past experience of which you would have gained in the you know past few years working with a similar type of application. So by involving the broadest possible sample of stakeholder, the risk identification process is most likely to identify most of the significant product quality risk. So just don't be limited like you know probably it might be an issue related to the documentation then documentation is something generic and you can definitely invite many other people and different stakeholders to contribute to that because not everyone looks forward to a documentation from the same point of view and broadest uh, range of stakeholders will definitely contribute from a great point of view so make sure that Try including as many people as possible, which are valid contributors. Just not that you have to invite everyone, then you just invite everyone. <laughs> okay. The risk identification often produces byproducts. So, of course, it's just not about identifying a risk. But during this analysis process, identification process, a lot of byproducts can also be identified. For example, identification of issues which are not product quality risk which might be associated with the product risk, but it's, it might be due to a particular personal issue. It might be due to a uh, developer constraint. It might be due to a program, right? So you have identified the product risk like uh, performance uh, response time or pro you know any, any activities response time, but it might be due to the development point of view or it might be due to architecture point of view. And we see a byproduct here that generally we make a lot of mistakes in architecture. So this time, my risk is about the response time to reduce that, but the byproduct is talking about the architecture documentation. Examples include general questions or issues about the product or project or problems in reference documentation such as uh, requirements and design specification. Further, project risks are also often identified as a product uh, byproduct of the quality risk identification process, but are not the main focus of the risk-based testing. So generally, in a risk-based testing, you try to identify more and more product risk, which are related to the quality attribute of the product and project risk anyways, you will get to know as a byproduct of this product analysis because these are one of the way related to the project activities. Okay, whatever goes wrong in your product is related to a project activity. So of course, by doing product analysis or product risk analyzing process, you will definitely get all your project anomalies and you can plan to resolve that. Well, that's all from this particular tutorial team. We'll be getting back to you with another tutorial as a part two and talking about the risk assessment in the next tutorial. So stay tuned for that. That's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.